Hello, this is Kathy from The Daily Marker. How are you today? I'm here for a Simon Says Stamp blog hop. We're celebrating the new release, Among the Stars, available June 16th, and it's there's so many fun things. I'm going to be using the Celestial stamp and die set today. I also, on my blog, have some details. I created another card and I think you'll want to check it out. So right now we're going to be working on the first card and I've gone ahead and die cut and stamp these because I don't think you guys need to see that. I know your time is precious. And right now I'm just, I die cut several of these and I'm just fiddling around seeing where I want them to go. I'm going to be putting these in like a window card and I want to line them up and I'm just figuring out the best way to do that since there's so many and I'm just trying to think of the fastest way. So what I've discovered for me the fastest way is I've used some double-sided tape here um, and I'm going to be, I cut a strip of uh, cardstock and I'm putting some glossy, a generous amount of glossy accents down and I'm going to, I just glued that down and then I'm folding the way, lazy way here is to fold that cardstock down. I'll trim it and glue it here so it's nice, sturdy. They're all glued down all at once um, and this worked pretty well. So this is how it looks. I'm going to put it in the window card here. So I've cut, um, Simon says stamp has these great um, square, stitch square dies. I've gone ahead and done that and I'm lining up my card base and my misty. I'm going to, I'm putting some Versamark on the sentiment. I love the sentiment. And I like to do it twice. I like to make sure it's nice and solid. Now I like to put my, um, I'm using some white, super fine white embossing powder and I'm taking a brush just to get out any strays, but I like to put my embossing powder in vintage syrup containers. You can find them on Etsy. I'm embossing my powder here and I usually like to put the heat gun on the back so I don't scorch it. And now that that is done, I'm going to be using some distress inks on my card to kind of make it like a nighttime scene. Nighttime scenes have been very popular and I wanted mine to look just to kind of give you a different idea. So I'm going to be using some polka dots and a stencil. But before I use a stencil, I like to put down a little layer of color first and I really want this window area to stand out. I want you to zoom in on that window area. So that's going to be the darkest. So I'm just, I like, I'm starting on the center and then bringing my distress tool around the edges. And now I'm just, I'm kind of lazy. I just laid my stencil down. This is the large dot stencil from Simon. And I can't read without my glasses what color I'm using right now. But it really doesn't matter whichever one. It might be Stormy Sky. Um, but you put down whatever you have. And I'm kind of focusing on the center where that window is. And I'm holding it down with my other hand. I'm being careful, but I just didn't feel like taping it. <laughs> so... That's how it looks, and I'm going to be adding some more color. I'm just, my ink pad's pretty dry, and so is my tool. So I was able to go over that sentiment a little bit without getting any marks. And now I'm using um, a darker blue, and I'm just focusing on that window area. Always start off the paper and then bring your tool in. So I've, I've been using Distress Ink for years, and I love stencils. I think you can get so much variety. I feel like it's the new background stamp. 
Now this you'll have some fun enjoying. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm using, I think it's peacock feathers. Your eyes are better than mine. I just wanted a green or a green blue to look like grass on this bottom strip. And because it's glued down and layered, there's that pink cardstock behind it and everything, uh, it wasn't coming on as easy as I thought. So sometimes when all else fails, I just take the ink pad and just swipe it on top. And then I'm using the distress tool to blend that out a little bit. And here I go again. I'm being careful on that edge because I don't want to get any ink on my die cuts there. God forbid, I don't want to die cut those again and glue them down again. So I just need a little strip to show in my window. Now I'm using the negative part of the window um, because when you pop it, you, you need a background. So I'm using this as the background. Sometimes it's easier just to use a piece of paper, then you don't have to line it up. But I had this here and I decided to do that. And I'm just kind of doing the same thing on the edges, just starting off the paper on the edge and bringing your tool to the center. You always kind of want a white spot somewhere. Now I'm not worrying if, the, if there's any marks. See at the top of there, there's some marks. And what I'll be doing is, no, okay, let me stop, sorry. Did you, you saw how I grabbed that ink there to just go over the top of that again. Try that out sometime. Now I wanted a sweet spot, like a bright, glow of yellow on my background and because I'm going to be putting a layer of vellum over this it doesn't need to look perfect so I'm starting on my paper and it's okay that there's a smush in the middle of it because see the vellum kind of makes it look kind of like a starry night so vellum makes everything better um, a great way to use vellum is to just put tape on the back since my window frame is popped on top of this i can use tape and you won't see it so that's always kind of nice i'm just lining up where i want this if i want the yellow to be at the top or the bottom so i'm just kind of figuring out how everything's going to play I end up putting that moon right on top of one of the stars so it looks like it's on one of the sticks. Um, so I always like to put a pop of color on the inside too. Now this top, the top part I lined, I put some foam tape on top and then did it again, a double layer because I really want a lot of dimension. Now I'm just fiddling where to put that square and then I tape that down again on my card base and I'm going to color the stars and the moon and then I'm finished. So that was really easy to make the background, the card base and these are great images, they're super fun and they're a quick color too, believe it or not. So I thought you might want to enjoy seeing that part as well. So I always like to add just a base layer of color, my lightest layer, and then bring in some darker color. In this particular case, I just want the moon to be subtle and I'm adding, always add a cheek color. And then I'm going to go back and dot my Copics on the moon to give it that crater look that the real moon has. And while I do this, um, I'm just going to take a minute to talk about the next coloring challenge, if you don't mind. Um, I finally set a date for the next one. It's going to be July 5th. Yeah, I'm thinking June, July, July, July 5th to August 5th. I do know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but it's kind of funny when you're making a video and doing a voiceover, you're watching yourself and then 
I don't know, sometimes it's like rubbing your belly and patting your head. It's, I, it throws me into stuttering and wondering what the heck I'm saying. So I'm adding, I add a little bit of eyeshadow always to the, um, the eye area. You know, I enjoy doing that. And then I'm using zero to add some more of those craters. So day one of the next, my fifth coloring challenge will be July 5th. And in the next week, I'll be having a big giveaway and you know, more gearing up towards it, new ways to prepare for the challenge. Not that you need to, but I know some of you guys like to do that. Um, so I'll be talking a lot more about it. But like always, everyone, it's a very simple challenge. You can color anything you want. You can use any medium. And my motto is, you know, just 10 minutes a day to carve out that time for yourself. So enough about that. Let's move on to the stars. I'm um, just adding, I think I'm just using two colors. I made these cards a few days ago and now I'm doing the voiceover. So I will never sound as professional as Jennifer McGuire. <laughs> um, but I hope you guys like me for me. So I'm just using the Y02 to blend out that darker yellow and it's feeling a little dry so I might pick up another one. Whenever I get a dry marker, I just stick it in my dry marker pile and then just pick up another color and wash over that. So I'm adding some foam tape to the back of the moon and you saw me do that to the stars as well. And I'm picking up my glitter pen. I'll link all the supplies in the description. But I'm using some glitter on the moon and the stars. When I do use any kind of glitter, I try not to go over the black line. I mean, it's not a big deal, but I just feel like it, I just love a good black line and I, the glitter kind of softens it a teeny tiny microscopic bit. So here's the card. It was really fun. And I, did you see that I added some stars horizontally and this was another card I made I went a little crazy and I had so much fun making this I hope you like it and I have the tips on making that second card on my blog thedailymarker.com and here's my brand new logo for the coloring challenge so sorry for blabbing on have a great day and thanks for watching